think we can make a start, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining this uh, first meeting group uh, meeting that has been organized by the European Council Leagues uh, to uh, make an easy interaction because all be, between all the projects uh, that have been funded by uh, the European Commission uh, working on cervical cancer uh, prevention and early detection that is part of the uh, Global Alliance for Clinic uh, Disease. Uh, before we start, uh, uh, so a few housekeeping that you all have here, so you know that you, please, when you're not speaking, try to mute uh, your microphone and unmute uh, before speaking. Uh, you may ask questions either uh, early or uh, within the chat. Uh, maybe it's better for uh, the one who are not speaking to switch off the camera just to uh, improve the quality of the, of the, of the connection. Uh, you know that this meeting, and you can uh, inform that this meeting is going to be recorded, so you may have and you will have access uh, to the recording uh, uh, and the slides. Uh, we have uh, six projects that we'll have to present and discuss, so that means that we have a very tight agenda, and we will, uh, 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 sorry, I'm speaking way too fast, uh, and we will uh, end shop at five. Uh, as it is uh, presumed. So that means that uh, I may be rude during some of the presentation and I will be in charge of reminding uh, the speakers, including me, uh, that we have two minutes left, one minute left, and uh, that it's time to uh, end the presentation just to leave uh, time enough uh, for the, the discussion and the interaction between uh, all the, the projects. So I already uh, touched base on that. So the objective uh, is to discuss and present all the projects uh, that are currently working on uh, celiac cancer prevention uh, and treatment, uh, to present the aims, the timelines, the expected outcomes and results, uh, to identify the synergy, the covertary activities and goals. And uh, we may have, an, we, I know that we have some of the project uh, which are interconnected because some of the partners are being are partnering uh, several uh, projects. Uh, and so the point is that we need to establish ways of working together to uh, not only avoid uh, duplication, but also enrich uh, our uh, project and maybe uh, speed up some of them uh, by sharing uh, experiences, results, and data. So that is the agenda. Uh, as you may see, we have six projects to be discussed and we, uh, so we have a quite tight schedule. So it's time for me to uh, give the floor to Yonis Buldis uh, for the opening remarks. Yonis. Thank you, Mark. I hope you can hear me all fine. It is perfectly. With, uh, very nice. It is with uh, great pleasure to join your event today. I understand it's the first of a series of events that I will be very happy to join you. Thank you very much, uh, Mark and Ginevra, the, organiza the organization team behind this event, that I would like to, to acknowledge how timely it is. Um, from my side also, it has been an excellent occasion to introduce you to the European Health and Digital Executive Agency, HADEA, that you all know that it's the new granting authority, uh, very briefly this time. And I find it timely because uh, uh, it's, uh, if we can move to the next slide, please. It's uh, a brand new agency of the European Commission established in uh, April 21. You have all received this kind of uh, transfer letter for the responsibility of your grant being moved from the European Commission services to this new agency. And uh, very briefly, I can tell you that the agency is responsible for programs related to health, but also digital, food safety, industry, and space. And together with the legacy program Horizon 2020, um, that includes projects like yours, 
we will have the task for the coming years, for the period 21 to 27, to manage and implement a budget of over than 20 billion of euros. Moving to the next slide, maybe it helps um, to add the information about the distinction with uh, and the close cooperation we have with the European Commission services. Uh, it has been decided so that the departments of the commission like a research and innovation or health and food safety that we, you, you are well aware, they define the policy and uh, they make the program decisions. And in Hadea, we are responsible to manage, to receive your proposals when you submit as applicants, to conduct the evaluation process and uh, to monitor the implementation through the project life cycle and uh, participate in, diff in a range of events, like for example, the one you have organized today. And importantly, a key remark I would like to make here, it is to provide meaningful feedback to policy making. Here it's important loop, here it's a very important flow of information that I'm very happy to join you. And as I have said, in the different meetings uh, in the past with um, the different project, how important it is to learn from you and keep updating myself and all together with events like that to, to demonstrate the impact uh, of your project back to the policy makers. And uh, if we can move, please, this is uh, again the website in case you have not been familiar to to have it and please feel free to bro to share it broadly with your stakeholders. So Hadea is a, a newborn agency that we aim with ambition to make it well known to the scientific community because I would like also to end up briefly with my brief presentation with the next slide to give the outline in more specifics about the programs we manage. And this include both the EU for Health under Hadea that uh, it is the flagship initiative of Europe's beating cancer plan and fits directly. And I'm quite assuming you are well familiar with the funding and tenders portal. You find the opportunities there, as well as with the Horizon Europe and the cancer mission, the other flagship initiative I have mentioned to you already. I'm very glad today that uh, I have the chance to spread the word simultaneously to, to all of you. Um, I think that's it. I wanted to, to thank you again and some helpful links uh, that you can find uh, further information. I will be happy to accept any questions that you might have and concern horizontally all of you. Uh, otherwise, I think it will be the easiest if you have any, any questions specific to each grant that we take it bilaterally. Once again, I wish you a very nice uh, uh, meeting and uh, thanks uh, very much to organizers. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Yanis. Does someone have a question to ask for Yanis? No? Back. Okay. So I'm uh, going to be the first to present uh, the CBX project. And maybe as an introduction, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the uh, uh, Utopia project team, uh, Ari, Iris, who they will come me in Erasmus MC a few years ago and they, they helped me a lot uh, to uh, improve the submission. Uh, so the Civic Screen project uh, is a project that is intended uh, and focusing on improving cervical cancer screening uh, in the uh, uh, eye, and medium income countries uh, trying to target uh, the uh, vulnerable women. So to increase, to increase and identify the best implementation gates. Next slide, please. Uh, so the project started on March, 2021. Uh, we uh, were funded up to 3.6 million euros. Uh, the coordinator is the uh, French National Institute of Research in Health Medicine, so the INSEM, and I'm, I'm the coordinator. And as it is depicted here, the, uh, the 
the, the mission is to accelerate the elimination of cervical cancer in Europe and to tackle inequalities and inequity. Uh, I'm, I'm, so I'm sure and 100% sure that everyone knows that, but we know that uh, in countries where uh, cervical cancer screening has been implemented, uh, most, the, the, most of the disease burden uh, is concentrated on the women who do not attend cervical cancer and is mostly affecting uh, underserved or vulnerable women such as uh, migrants, uh, women of low socioeconomic background, uh, female sex workers, women living with HIV. Uh, so those are the women who uh, are uh, the other to reach. So the aim was to make screening more accessible and acceptable. And that is something that is essential to us. So that means that the idea was we cannot only uh, design uh, screening policy uh, using a top-down approach, but we need uh, to understand the acceptability and the uh, discoverability of uh, uh, of dedicated uh, screening policies. So we are expecting by the end uh, to uh, develop and suggest cervical cancer screening program tailored to vulnerable underserved groups and to uh, go for policy recommendation. Next slide, please. So I've already mentioned that we, are, we have 14 partners across 10 European countries. Uh, you have here the list. Uh, can we move forward? Maybe just one, one thing at that time is to say that we have had a very strong uh, uh, consortium and everyone was really, really uh, involved and dedicated and the, the, the product was not uh, funded at its first attempt. And uh, the, the, the group uh, has really been uh, proactively working on the resubmission uh, to be finally uh, successful. Next slide. So I've already uh, talked about this. So the mission is to in increase the stru structural knowledge uh, and, and provide insight into screening policy, uh, try to reach uh, vulnerable women. And we want to increase uh, uh, early detection appropriate management in cervical cancer screening. I know that everyone knows that, that uh, going into screening is not enough if we don't go down to the path of uh, the management of women uh, who have been identified with, uh, with high risk lesion. So we want to create flexible and responsible uh, framework to uh, uh, develop uh, cervical cancer screening policies. And the idea is that we need to cost constraints. So the, the, the point is that we don't want to say, okay, we know what is uh, going to be working. And sometimes we want to hear the solution from all the stakeholders, so meaning the, uh, the end users, the women themselves, the policymakers, and the people who are in charge of implementing and, and running uh, the screening policies in uh, the European uh, countries. And the idea by the end is to reduce the burden of cervical cancer screening, to improve life expectancy and well being, and to reduce health uh, inequities. The, the, uh, in France, and I know that is the case in, in many European countries, uh, cervical cancer screening is the uh, cancer which is the most affected uh, by social uh, inequalities. And we think that by uh, more specific targeting or trying to reach uh, vulnerable women, we may decrease the disease burden uh, very significantly. Next slide. So the project uh, is built on three pillars, uh, quite classical. So the first one is to understand the barriers and, and context assessment. The second pillar is to develop tailored cervical cancer screening program uh, who are truly designed to, uh, to be uh, able to reach at the vulnerable women. We want to, uh, the third pillar is the evaluation of the, the screening programs we will build and the dissemination. And we have really quite classically uh, seven work packages. Uh, the first one is the management. The second one with the second work package, the stakeholder engagement is, as I mentioned, the idea is to develop stakeholder engagement tools uh, to be able to really co-construct uh, the, the, the screening program with all uh, stakeholders. Uh, we will so co-create uh, some tailored cervical cancer, cancer screening programs. We have one more package that is intended to understand the behavior determinants and societal issues for many reasons. The first one is that uh, 
we may have economic, legal, and ethical issues, and we have uh, intervention that may be uh, that may be considered as of interest, but uh, not really working. We consider the, uh, the 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 cost effectiveness of the programs, and then of course we'll have to disseminate and communicate. Uh, next slide. I'm running out of time. Uh, I'm not going to go far on this slide. The expectation truly uh, is by then to contribute to the United Nations system goal to uh, reduce by one third premature death from no, non communicable diseases. And we truly do think that if we can develop tailored uh, cervical cancer screening programs, uh, we can improve and, and participate to uh, these goals being reached. Next slide. Uh, um, I think I've already uh, discussed. So where are we at this stage? After the first year, we have reached, I think most of the milestones we were expected to reach uh, by the end of year one, despite uh, the very significant impact, impact of COVID-19. Uh, we have the website, we have the project leaflet and poster. We have uh, already work on the stakeholders and, and the CUBS uh, are already planned. The systematic review uh, are being conducted and are close to be uh, told, with the interest on, on focusing on uh, underserved women. And for the implementation study in three key countries, so Romania, Estonia, and Portugal, uh, the first visit to partner have been uh, done, and we are working on designing the, the intervention. Next slide. Uh, we, of course, want to collaborate uh, with other projects, and that, that was one of the intention for this first uh, meeting, meet and greet. And we, of course, have in mind to organize a periodic meet and greet uh, meeting. Once we get to exchange, uh, our aim together is to improve cervical cancer screening, to reduce disease burden, and we need to collaborate instead of uh, pursuing each other as competitors. Uh, we, uh, I think we should coordinate the communication activities because uh, uh, what will be uh, found in our project need to be disseminated, otherwise uh, that won't exist. And when we I mean communication, it's not only uh, publication, but we need to communicate uh, to all stakeholders, including and, and uh, first uh, the, the, uh, the NGOs, the women uh, who need to be uh, screened. And we uh, will, of course, try to uh, know and identify any other project uh, working on tasks similar to others, uh, ours, because once again, we need to uh, make the, the, the program uh, collaborative and, and uh, more efficient. Next slide. So thank you. Uh, and we have here the list of the, the very committed partners we have uh, in the project. You have the contact, so you, uh, you have my, uh, uh, you know me, and you have Christian Dash and Nadel from INSEM Transfer, who is uh, uh, supporting and, and making all the most of the work on the project, uh, connecting uh, the partners and making sure that the uh, project uh, stay on track. Thank you. Now, if you have any question. If you do, you can either raise your hand or you can just pop them in the chat. Thank you. No question, we're going to save time. Okay, I think yes, there is one question. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much for a very nice presentation. Um, my question is um, the interventions that you are going to plan, the screening programs, how do they relate to, to national programs in, in those countries? Are those um, separate from national programs or are you working on improving existing national programs? 
A uh, very good okay. question. I, I think that it will, it will of course, depend on uh, the ways uh, and the level of, of uh, I would say, implementation of the screening programs in the different countries. The idea is not to build something uh, absolutely new, it's really to try to improve uh, the, the, the existing programs and maybe develop as part as, uh, as the screening program some dedicated intervention. You know, Apart from this uh, study, I'm running uh, a study in France uh, just to improve. And the idea is for the woman, uh, uh, can we, based on the screen program that already uh, exists, can we find a way to maybe uh, have a, a more narrow focus on those women? Can we uh, make specific uh, intervention for, for those programs? You know, for example, you know that. Uh, I risk women, maybe women living with HIV or women uh, prison inmates. And you may try to find a way to uh, reach out those women specifically, uh, for example, going in HIV clinics, going in de addiction clinics, going in, in, uh, in uh, women's prison. And so the, uh, the idea is that we will build on the existing program, but we know that we need uh, to find a way apart from this, pro or beside from this existing program to improve uh, the screening for those who do not uh, attend. We have general programs. Most of them are not tailored to the need of given subgroups, and we need to find a way to adapt the existing programs and to improve the existing programs uh, to the need of vulnerable women. Thank you, very clear, thanks. Anyone else? And, and Jet, yes. can, you, can you briefly tell me on, on which project you, you're involved in, if you are? He's the next presenter. Okay, sorry. Yes, Prescript Tech. Any other question? Yes, can I um, please? My name is Helene Vermandere. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so I was wondering if uh, some of these interventions would also um, involve uh, new tools or self sampling uh, techniques, or uh, yes. whether that would also be part. Is it pap smear based? Is it HPV DNA based? Are you exploring these options as well? Okay, so the idea and the call was not on developing new tools, uh, but on uh, that's, that was most, uh, mostly in the, um, implementation. So that means that uh, we'll not use and even new devices. As you mentioned, uh, self-sampling, for example, of course, self-sampling is not a new tool. So it's something that has a proven uh, benefit. And the idea, uh, self-sampling, it's just a way to, uh, to uh, screen women based on HPV sampling. So the uh, we are not reinventing the fact that we may uh, screen for HPV, but the point is that we want to increase the uptake. So self-sampling is one of the uh, interventions that can be done, but even using self-sampling, you know, it's, that's the, the, the part of my question. Uh, the, the, the idea is to improve the, the uptake in, once again, uh, maybe a specific uh, group. So I think it's, Time to move on because we already uh, uh, late. So I'm going to uh, give the room to uh, Dr. Japkut. Um, I hope I said it properly for the uh, Prescript Tech program. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share and a very good initiative. Can you see my screen? Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, so I will present on behalf of the consortium about the Prescript Tech Prevention and Screening Intervention Project towards uh, elimination of cervical cancer that is fin financed by the European Union and for the activities in India financed by the Department of Biotechnology uh, of the Ministry of Science and Technology. Um, so our project uh, is uh, about cervical cancer, and I don't have to uh, uh, mention to you in detail uh, about cervical cancer, but it's important to know that most of the women dying of cervical cancer 
actually die in low and middle income countries. And of, as mentioned before, in vulnerable groups uh, in, uh, in more developed countries. So um, we uh, concentrate in the project on the screening um, for HPV. Um, and of course, um, the immediate treatment if we find cervical cancer uh, lesions. Um, we apply both um, pap smear um, and uh, VIA. In the pap smear we do in uh, European country and uh, the visual inspection with acetic acid we apply in uh, India, Bangladesh um, and Uganda, uh, which is an alternative way, but uh, uh, with similar results as, uh, as pap smear. Um, so there are many um, existing uh, VIA screening programs in low and middle income countries, and uh, um, we try to um, improve on existing, um, mostly national screening programs. Um, so um, this is, of course, uh, part of the GACD uh, initiative, uh, and as I mentioned before, funded by EU and DBT. And we implement the project in, in four countries, in the Slovak Republic, in uh, Europe, in Bangladesh, India, uh, and Uganda. We started on the 1st of February 2021 and will continue for three years, have a funding of 3 million from the EU and uh, half a million um, from uh, DBT um, in India. So these are the partners that um, are um, universities from different countries uh, in uh, Europe uh, and in uh, other countries um, um, and some uh, NGOs that are working uh, with us uh, and one company of, uh, specialized in communication. Um, so in India, we also have many uh, partners who are implementing the activities there. India is a bit special because India is not an associate country of the EU, so it is a more or less parallel project that we have integrated. So what are we doing in the project um, in the low and middle income countries? We will do um, HPV self-testing. We just discussed about this. That's not new, but it has not been applied in any national program in the countries where we are working. Um, the advantage of HPV self-testing is that uh, um, only the women who are HPV positive need further VIA or as in uh, Slovakia, pap smear. So uh, many uh, less numbers of women need that test compared to the HPV test uh, as a primary test. Um, so in that VIA test, um, we will also use um, an artificial intelligence decision support system that has been developed uh, by an institute in India, MAHE, um, and we will see how it works in task shifting. Um, and of course, we will provide um, direct treatment for women who have uh, precancerous lesions. So we will provide cryotherapy or thermal ablation. Uh, in uh, Slovakia, the system will be um, that after the HPV self-test, there will be a pap smear, um, which is already a routine um, uh, way of uh, testing in uh, Slovakia. The, the HPV self-test is not part of the routine. So women will then join the routine program um, after HPV self-testing. Um, we try to make... Uh, screening more convenient for women, and especially uh, we uh, target uh, women who are more vulnerable, as mentioned in the previous project as well. So we look um, for uh, Roma community uh, and female um, car manufacturing workers in Slovakia who are often uh, less able or willing to participate in screening programs. Uh, and in uh, Bangladesh and Uganda, we look uh, specifically at uh, very remote rural areas where women are far away from uh, health clinics. 
Um, and in uh, India, we are looking at uh, different populations, uh, including uh, the sex workers and each, uh, HIV positive women. In our project, we uh, try to use uh, modern communication technology. Um, we try to make use of uh, increasing uh, ICT possibilities uh, and to reach women. Um, also in remote areas that is more and more used. And we try to use innovative mobile technology for testing uh, and recording. Um, and we think that with our screening, we can uh, prove that it is cost effective to work with uh, HPV self-testing. So we look at the uptake. Can we increase the uptake with this new protocol? Does HPV self-testing make it much easier for women uh, and much more acceptable uh, to participate in screening? Can the social media be a way to mobilize women? Then we look at artificial intelligence. Can we have a better uh, selection of patients who need treatment? And can we um, use this in task shifting where nurses with lower levels of training can perform the VIA uh, and uh, refer women for treatment with the decision support system. And of course, we want to make a business case. We know that HPV testing is now around $40 per uh, test, but we think that uh, if the test can be cheaper, um, it can be more affordable for low and middle income countries to um, apply this. Um, so we will collect quantitative data with a baseline and endline survey and routine data. We will collect information on artificial intelligence. Uh, we will look at how health facilities are able to implement this new protocol. Um, and we will look at client factors, um, whether they accept self-testing and we will perform surveys for that. Uh, we will have a number of PhDs who are going to be trained in this project. Um, we are now um, working on the preparatory phase. We have uh, um, done all the procurement for the tests and the ma uh, machinery, the equipment. Um, we um, are in the process of training um, and uh, um, we are now starting um, with the first test uh, to test the equipment and the procedures and uh, working on the baseline survey. And then from uh, um, 1st of May onwards, we will have uh, a full-fledged screening. We will, in the four countries, um, do around 8,000 uh, HPV tests uh, per country. And we will then uh, see how many women need further VIA or pap smear we expect between 15 and 20 percent of the HPV positive of the HPV tests so uh, to be HPV positive and needing further testing. You all know that um, the WHO has launched this global uh, strategy on accelerating of elimination of cervical cancer um, and these are the projections um, so with the combination of HPV vaccination and the improved screening using HPV testing and also uh, VIA or pap smear. Um, in combination, we can by 2040 already uh, reduce cervical cancer considerably uh, and work towards elimination of cervical cancer. So in fact, our project is looking much at the feasibility um, of the um, WHO protocol in low and middle income countries and in vulnerable groups in high income countries. So thank you uh, on behalf of the consortium. Um, you see my email address and if you have further questions, um, please, uh, you know where to find me. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks to you. Are there any, uh, and th thanks for keeping on time. Are there any questions uh, related to uh, Prescript Tech? Maybe I can start. Uh, that may be one very 
basic question, but my understanding is that you uh, are using a pap smear uh, in some country in HPV test, and you're using the uh, IA for the, the pap smear assessment only in the country where you are basing screening on pap smear first. That's no, correct. No. no. We, 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 yes, we do pap smear um, and VIA because we follow as much as possible the national programs. And in uh, uh, Slovakia, pap smear is part of the national program. VIA is not part of the national program, but it is uh, done uh, in India, Bangladesh, and Uganda, where VIA is the primary choice because there are not enough pathologists to do the pap smear analysis. But we use the artificial intelligence in VIA. So we take a picture okay. of, uh, of the cervix. Eh? If you do the acid coloring, you see the white coloring uh, of the lesions. So you can take a picture with a modified mobile camera. Um, and in that modified camera, there is the software that has the algorithm and gives a result. And in case of doubt, um, we can send through the mobile camera the picture to a gynecologist for a sec second opinion. So the um, artificial intelligence is used in combination with VIA. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions? Maybe so, uh, if there are no questions, what, one additional question. What was the, the, the idea you had by selecting uh, different countries, so different background, uh, high income country or medium income country and, and India and, and Africa? You said that those are two parallel programs or do you consider that in fact they can uh, provide results that can uh, feed each other? Yes, yeah, so you want to uh, apply this system in different countries um, just to, to compare uh, the, the feasibility and know what are the barriers and facilitators uh, in, in different uh, conditions because um, WHO wants this to be implemented globally. Um, so by diversing, diversifying our countries where we do the uh, research, we can also see what are the different conditions. Uh, for, for, for example, in, in Bangladesh, um, they are much more advanced in uh, ICT and there's much more coverage of internet throughout the country, while in Uganda it is uh, very low. So. Um, then you can see what are the different conditions and, and different situations. Thanks a lot, Jeb. Uh, I think it's now time to move on uh, to the next project, unless someone else has something to ask. So now uh, the uh, floor is open to Ellen Bergmandere, the Chile program. Oh, that's Olivier de Gomme. No, who's going to present? Yes, hello. Um, you hello. can hear me and you can see my yes. screen? Yes, we can. Yes. So uh, my name is Helene Fernando, but I'm presenting on behalf of uh, Professor uh, Olivier de Gomme, um, who is a scientific coordinator uh, of the Chile program. Now, um, I will present the Chile program, but I'm a bit disobedient and I will squeeze in also our other project Elevate as it will be important to understand and follow the objectives of the Chile program. So if you allow me, um, so Elevate is a, is a project that started already a couple of years ago and it wasn't uh, a project that answered the call on implementation research of Horizon 2020, it was answering the call on translational uh, collaborative uh, cancer research between Europe and the community of Latin America and Car Caribbean states. So in Elevate, uh, in this project, um, the challenges that we've uh, identified was as also presented in the first project here, um, that there are still a lot of women that current programs are not reaching. So we have hard to reach women um, uh, in, in each of the countries, also countries with high uh, screening uptake, there always are uh, subgroups of women who are not uh, reached. 
We also identified that when it comes to HPV DNA testing, um, I think the, um, there are many uh, tests now on the market, but we noticed that there's uh, that the same test, uh, the, the two different tests uh, analyzing the same sample does not always generate uh, the same results. So there's um, uh, these tests can still be uh, improved, or we should should verify where the differences come from. Also, what we know, of course, is HPV DNA testing generates a lot of uh, false positives. Uh, not every woman infected with HPV DNA um, uh, will generate uh, cancer, will develop cancer. Uh, and then, of course, HPV DNA testing, which is um, more and more um, presented as, as a better test or, um, as opposed to pap smear because of the higher sensitivity. Um, that's not always feasible now in low income settings um, uh, or point of care testing because of the fact that you need lab infrastructure. And then, of course, um, a lot of the current screening tools, the HPV DNA test, but also pap smear, um, are um, not always available or acceptable or cost effective when it comes to reaching these hard to reach women. Um, so, these were the key challenges that uh, we identified in uh, Elevate, and we Tried, uh, we'll try to answer them as follows. We um, are working in four countries, in Belgium, Brazil, Ecuador, and Portugal, and just very similar with the first project, the C chair project, CBIC project, I believe it was called. Um, so we want to identify hard to reach women. So which are the subgroups in Belgium, Brazil, Ecuador, and Portugal that um, uh, are not screened or on, or on their screen? Then when it comes to uh, the testing, we are developing a new testing device. Um, we want to uh, develop a device that will be able to detect the, H the 14 high-risk HPV DNA ty types separately, combined with the detection of two protein uh, biomarkers that will tell us something whether or not the infection that uh, may be present is already generating uh, precancerous lesions. Now, um, once we have the tests developed, these tests will be um, transferred, let's say, in a portable testing device. Um, we aim for a testing device that is not bigger than a shoebox. It will have a battery, so it's, um, you don't uh, rely on, the, on electricity. And uh, also important is that we aim to generate the results in one hour. So if, uh, oh, and it's also compatible with self-sampling. Self so if a woman takes a sample, um, uh, the turnover time uh, to generate the result will be more or less one hour. Uh, we're um, uh, developing the device, and once we have it, we will pilot it again in the four countries, Belgium, Brazil, Ecuador, and Portugal, to um, estimate uptake and to uh, evaluate user friendlessness and so on. And it will all, we also will have a cost effectiveness analysis. Uh, so an economic um, component uh, added to the pilot intervention uh, to, to know the efficiency of uh, the effectiveness of, the, of our new tool. So as I said, this, was a, a, this program is already uh, ongoing a couple of years now. We started in 2019. What we've done so far was a literature review and focus group discussions to identif ident identify the hard to reach women and the current barriers <clears throat> in the four countries. But also important, we discuss with, him, with them um, their perspectives, their attitudes towards this um, option, this future option of self-sampling um, and a point of care device. And it's not, it's not only point of care, we, can, we really aim to go into the community. So um, not a health setting anymore but uh, try to reach them in the community. So we discussed this with them uh, to have already an idea about how we would best um, uh, offer the, the new screening to, device to them, what would be the most efficient way and acceptable way, of course. Um, so as I said, we're developing these tests to detect the 14 uh, high-risk HPV types and the protein biomarkers. Um, it's based on self-sampling. It will be one cartridge with two sensors, one HPV DNA sensor, one protein sensor. And as I said, it's portable um, and should generate the result in one hour. And uh, by the end of this year, beginning of next year, 
we aim to start the pilot intervention. So this is very shortly um, Elevate and um, the technical partners, the ones that are working on the development of the screening tool are Ghent University Faculty of uh, Engineering, CMST. There's Spain, there is uh, Microliquid in uh, Spain as well, Labman is in London, Fraunhofer is in Germany. And then the public health partners is ICRH, um, International Center for Reproductive Health of Ghent University. Um, Barretos a Hospital in Brazil, um, Portugal with the Universidad Nova, and uh, Cuenca in Ecuador. And INSP is the Mexican partner uh, um, responsible for the economic uh, evaluation. So this was very, very shortly elevated. And the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because now uh, Chile is the project um, that just started um, and is uh, like the follow up of Elevate, we can say. Here we will work in low and middle income countries. We have a bit the same challenges, although they're a bit broader, I believe. Um, in these countries, we see that very often there's still basic information missing on prevalence, incidence, and mortality, definitely on, on local level. Um, and for example, also on the presence of HPV types, there's very little known. Uh, sometimes the, of course, the, um, the current programs, VIA, uh, sometimes there's a pap smear, very often the uptake is still pretty low, so um, women are uh, under screened. So um, the lack for HPV testing um, in low income countries very much related with the fact that the lab infrastructure is missing. and. Um, Again, uh, in these countries, um, not that much evidence on, on pilot interventions, on self uh, acceptability of self sampling, cost effectiveness of um, new screening techniques or sc screening strategies. Um, and in general, um, also uh, a lack of cervical screening, screening, and de uh, screening demand and supply. So, with demand, we say women are not um, actively looking to get screened, and with supply, is also that health facilities often have other priorities and uh, or don't have the equipment or the capacity to offer cervical cancer screening. So um, now that we are in the Chile project, we wanna take our Elevate screening tool and see whether or not uh, we can use it to offer universal screening as a universal screening test in low and middle income countries. So in Elevate, the screening tool is developed um, as to reach hard to reach women in these European and Latin American countries. Now we want to see can we upscale um, our tool and, and can we offer it in, in other countries where screening is often even lower. Um, so again, we, we want to develop a screening uh, strategy um, that now includes this elevate self sampling test. Uh, and see whether we can develop a strategy um, compatible, uh, adapted to the context of the low and middle income countries. We, uh, and it's not specified here, but very important, we will work in uh, Mozambique, Uganda, Ethiopia, and Cambodia. And now, um, one minute I'm, I'm running out of, running out of time. Yes, you are. Yes, I'll go very fast. So we, um, so the, the tool itself uh, will be uh, adapted for upscaling. So for example, they will work with uh, cheaper um, materials to make sure that it's an affordable tool. And again, we will do a pilot intervention in the four countries. So here uh, we just started, we're doing now the literature review and uh, we'll soon have focus group discussions to again, talk with women and also stakeholders on how to develop that strategy, how to offer women our self-sampling, elevate self-sampling test. We will also do a survey to have like a, a basic knowledge, basic coverage, uh, baseline coverage, uh, and uptake of, of the current screening uh, programs to then see um, how that will affect um, how our self sampling uh, can can increase the the uptake. As I said, the the tool will be um, adapted. We will check whether we are targeting the right HPV DNA. Uh, um, the targets uh, so that we, we make sure that the, our test is compatible in these four other countries and uh, using uh, more affordable materials to reach higher volume production 
and then uh, at the end of the project again a pilot intervention um, uh, to assess uptake and to assess the cost effectiveness analysis. Um, so that was very shortly uh, Chile. So the same technical partners, but then here for the public health team, we work, as I said, with Cambodia, um, Ethiopia, Uganda, and Mozambique. And it's the Universität Greifswald in Germany who will do the economic analysis. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. Uh, there's some question. I have some question, but I don't want the, the, the only one to ask questions. Uh, one question is that so I, uh, you, you made a, a, a very uh, good presentation of the Elevate project and so saying that you're trying to develop uh, with a device and then the device will be uh, also uh, tested in low uh, income country in Chile. I've not understood whether or not you have uh, terminated the Elevate program. And so that it, have you validated uh, your device or not mm -hmm. yet? Yeah, the validation steps are ongoing. So one of the, and I, yeah, there was no, there was no time to uh, discuss everything. Uh, one important aspect of Elevate and Chile is that we collect samples among women in the, in the implementation countries. So Belgium, Portugal, Brazil, and uh, uh, Ecuador in Elevate, and then later on in the Chile project. We collect samples over there and we use these samples to validate our tests. Um, at the moment, it, the validation is at the lab and, and very soon, um, actually, uh, very soon we will start validating with these samples, the sensors that will be developed. And then in the next step, it's the complete tool, sensor on the cartridge in the tool. So yes, these steps are, um, are part of the project. Okay, one additional question. Uh... Uh, short question. You, you have mentioned that you're going to uh, make a two arm trials trial. Uh, mm. Quick question: What are the two arms? Mm, yeah. And, and Sorry, what, again. what 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 are the endpoints for these yeah. trials? Uh, the two arms. So in one arm, we will give women only information and will uh, tell them where they can get screened through the national programs. So uh, mostly BIA and the Chile. Um, countries in Elevate at Spap Smear. Uh, and so we will give them the information and then uh, follow up and see whether they have gone for uh, screening through that national program. Uh, so there the outcome is uptake uh, of, of uh, screening through the national program. The other arm will be the arm where women get information, but also are offered this, the, the new self-sampling uh, device and they can, uh, be screened at a, at a, on on spot. So there, the we measure the uptake of um, and the acceptability of our self sampling device. So whether or not, if you offer it to them, uh, do they accept the self sampling and and uh, and our screen, new screening device? And then uh, we also try to uh, follow them up to see if, for example, somebody. Had a positive result, whether or not uh, she goes looking for for referral treatment um, uh, in in the in the national uh, programs in the referral hospitals. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, sorry, I just received one question in the chat. Uh, that just received just reached me, but I'm just going to read it for Helene. Um, uh, Anna Tisley is asking: Usually, those who are at the highest risk of cervical cancer are very hard to reach, and make them take a test. And those more aware and more healthier can be reached easier. So, what methods would you envision uh, to use to make, let's say, nearly impossible to reach women test themselves? Yeah. So um, we will uh, start. Um, we have discussed it, of course, already a lot. We have had the focus group discussions on it. And by the end of this year, we will start a pilot. But in the coming months, we will start what I call the pilot of the pilot, like testing and see what works best. So what we're thinking, it, it differs in all of the countries, because in all of the countries, well, we have to think of a strategy that, that is adapted to the context. And uh, so it's really, really going in, into the community and going uh, to the women. They don't have to come to us. We also don't send the self-sampling device with, with, uh, to their house, which is also often done. Um, so we really hope to, to, 
like for example in Belgium, we will work with organizations that already work with hard to reach women, for example, social restaurants or um, uh, yeah, the uh, organizations that offer help to drug users and so on. And we will try to kind of link um, our information session and uh, in, in the second arm offering the self sampling device to activities uh, of these organizations. So we try to limit the effort of the woman. We really um, try to, 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 to build already up on the, the trust relation that they have established with certain organizations. So if they come uh, to social restaurants, then we will offer them the device, asking them to stay 15 minutes longer, for example. Um, so th these are some of the examples. Uh, as I said, it's quite different in all of the countries, but it's a very good question and I'm very curious to see our results and whether or not self-sampling will be acceptable and, and how much um, the participation rate will be. Thank you. It's time to move on to the next uh, presenter. I think so. Uh, yes, we uh, already uh, late. So that's I'm um, giving the the floor to the Ethiopia East project. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so I will present the Utopia East projects toward improved cancer screening for breast, cervical, and colorectal cancer in Eastern Europe. Uh, this is led by Erasmus MC, and these are our partners. And now it takes some time to go to the next slide. Ah, yeah, there. Um, so we know there's cancer screening in most countries in Europe, and we also know that in most of the Eastern European countries, there's less monitoring, uh, more opportunistic screening, and the screening programs started later, so they are less matured. Uh, they often have less capacity also for diagnosis and treatment, and there is less equity. So the question in this project is how to implement organized cancer screening programs in Eastern European countries. European countries. Uh, so we are going to implement improved cancer screening programs in Georgia for breast cancer screening, in Romania for cervical cancer screening, and in Montenegro for colorectal cancer screening. Um, so we choose these partners because um, they have different barriers. Their uh, program is in different levels of maturity. And we think, therefore, they can be exemplary for all other countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, but we also want to involve the other Eastern Europe, European countries and also Mediterranean countries by involving them in workshops and webinars uh, to build capacity on monitoring and evaluation of their own screening program. And also to provide them tools to develop a roadmap to improve their own cancer screening program. So for this project, we start uh, with uh, developing roadmaps for those three exemplary countries and then implement those roadmaps and monitor the results and evaluate the results and to see if upscaling of the program to a national level is feasible. Uh, for the other countries, we will uh, in workshops um, yeah, uh, enable them to monitor and evaluate their own cancer screening program and to develop their own roadmaps. So the project started in May and it will take five years. So in the first year, uh, we aim for develop the roadmaps for the exemplary countries with the use of various tools, I will explain later. And in the next years, really implement the screening and in the final years, then organize the workshops for the other countries and exchange the experiences of the implementation. And also organize roundtable discussions for upscaling the programs in the exemplary countries. Uh, this is an example of the roadmap for cervical cancer screening in Romania, 
Well, this is not the final roadmap, but uh, a preliminary version just to see how it looks like. Um, so uh, the countries identify their three main barriers to implement an optimized screening program. Uh, so for Romania, for example, this was a lack of population register, inadequate IT systems and an inadequate monitoring system. And for each barrier, they identified which stakeholders are involved and some actions they can take. And of course, this roadmap will be developed uh, further and more detailed. Uh, this project builds upon our previous project, the Utopia project, uh, in which we um, aim for optimizing cancer screening programs in Europe by evaluating the harms, benefits and cost effectiveness. And in this project, we have developed a number of tools. So um, a monitoring evaluation tool, barrier analysis tool, stakeholder and a roadmap tool. And we organized uh, four workshops in which uh, participants of all European countries uh, were present. And those were researchers, uh, screening program coordinators, policy makers. And in those um, workshops, we uh, demonstrated the tools and we also got feedback and improved the tools. And there was a lot of uh, exchange in, in knowledge and experiences in improving programs. Um, and I want to give a very quick demonstration of the evaluation tool, because maybe that can be of use for other uh, projects. Um, so this tool is based upon our uh, MISCAN models, which can um, evaluate the effects of screening. Um, before we developed this tool, we made um, four very detailed uh, models for different countries in different regions in Europe. And then we made these tools available to, uh, yeah, to all, uh, all uh, interest people by um, making it a web tool. And uh, in here they can download a data template and fill out uh, country specific data. So for example, data on the population, incidence and mortality of the cancers, so nationwide uh, data, but also data on their screening protocol and some indicators. So the attendance, the referral, detection rates and costs. Then they can upload this data template and uh, choose various screening strategies. So for example, at which ages do you want to screen uh, with, with interval? For cervical cancer screening, also the HPV uh, vaccination coverage and the attendance. And then they can run their, their current screening program, for example, but they can also try out uh, different uh, alternatives and see yeah, what's the effect of removing a barrier, for example. So uh, the outcomes of these tools are. Um, yeah, different harms, different benefits of programs, and um, also the cost effectiveness. So this is just one example where you can see what happens with different scenarios with a, a cervical cancer mortality. So what we can share uh, with the other projects are, for example, the tools and the methods we use. Uh, we can offer participation in some Utopia East workshops and experience in developing roadmaps. And what we would like to exchange is experiences in implementing screening and how to improve equity. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so do we have a question? Uh, maybe I can start so that this so Ethiopia East is the extension from the Ethiopia project to the east. That's correct. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, well, it's a different project. It's also new partners, but yeah, it's it's based upon the, uh, uh, the previous project. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned that uh, I think that's from year two to year five you will make the implementation. Uh, so do you mean does it mean that you have a formal? I mean that you're going to test something to do or just to implement uh, the spring or are you trying to uh, pilot test uh, some given intervention? Yeah. So yeah, the roadmaps are not finished yet now, so we don't know at the moment exactly how the implementation will look like. Uh, but it will be yeah. Uh, so the all the free countries already have some kind of screening. So yes. those will be improvements in their screening program. Okay, I think maybe we uh, once again the idea is that uh, and the, the, so the, the objective of this uh, meeting today is to interact because I've noticed that you have Romania uh, as one of uh, of the, the the pilot country. And we also have Romania, uh, so I think that uh, and and there is only one screening organization. So that means that we need to coordinate. Yes, uh, yeah, I also noticed. Yes, <laughs> I, I don't see any issue of having both project uh, uh, working on the same country. You know, we are all working uh, on the same purpose. But I think that we need, and I'm absolutely fine with exchanging with you. Uh, once we also don't know exactly what intervention we're going to implement in Romania, but I think really uh, there is a need for us to coordinate our effort. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's certainly true. Are there some questions? No? So, thank you very much. Uh, and now it's, time to move to the Equity Cancer LA, Maria Luisa. Oh. Maria Luisa, sí. sí. I will share my presentation. One moment, please. Now I see you, uh, I think you are seeing my presentation. All good, thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm Luisa Vázquez. Um, I will speak and present our project on behalf of the Equity Cancer LA team. Our project is slightly different to the other projects because we focus not in the population, but uh, in the health services. And we don't focus on screening, but on early detection. Um, I, uh, this is the, the scheme of my presentation. I will start by presenting the members, then why we conduct this uh, project, our objectives and research design, what are our expected impacts and uh, dissemination and where we are now. You can see here we have um, uh, six participating countries, three in Europe and three in Latin America with seven partners. In Latin America, the University of El Rosario in Colombia, the Catholic University of Ecuador in Ecuador, the Public Health School in Santiago in Chile. And in Europe, we have the University of Copenhagen, the Universidad de Nova de Lisboa in Lisbon, uh, and the uh, Research Foundation San Juan de Deo and the, my institution, which is the Consortium for Social uh, for Healthcare and Social Services of Catalonia. This is a bit of uh, the the hum, human side of the pr uh, project, and this is our first meeting of the consortium with all the PIs and some team members, where we were celebrating that we got the funding. So we were very happy, and we call it a smiling meeting. 
why why are we conducting this project first because we know already from uh, the evidence exist, existing, existing that uh, health service fragmentations together with poor quality of primary care in Latin America are among the main causes of uh, limited access to healthcare and also for low uh, population with a low socioeconomic status. We know also that the uh, integrated care intervention that strengthen primary care and improve uh, cross-level care coordination are essential for early cancer diagnosis. In fact, there are evidence for high-income countries and are promoted but not uh, evaluated in the national cancer plans in many countries of Latin America. We also know that participatory approach are effective is effective in tailoring intervention and achieving organizational change. So there is a need for implementation research in Latin America to look at effectiveness in the health of the intervention in the health system and social context. And last but not least, uh, we are basing as uh, some of the other projects in our previous experience of Equity LA1 and Equity LA2 where we could develop evidence on access to care, determinants of access, equity in access, efficiency. We also look at, uh, we develop uh, experience in implementation research, uh, introducing participatory action research, developed uh, integration interventions. We adapted uh, ICTs in training, but also to improve care coordination in the health services. We have uh, the experience in developing a community of practice in the area we are working, and also, and very important, in getting research into policy and practice. So that's why we decided to move on to this new project. And I, I forgot to tell that in our, uh, also an important thing because it uh, was that one of the partners in the Equity LA2 moved already in adapting the methods of the Equity LA2 to the area of cancer. We were focusing on chronic diseases in general, but uh, because of this partner moving into applying it to cancer, we decided to, to create uh, this new project. In this project, we have two main analytical frameworks. This one, which is uh, based or modified with, for Walter et al. to analyze delays in cancer diagnosis and we have a, we use the calculation of the total patient uh, the total delays and add to it the adai anderson framework to analyze the factors that influence in the delays in order to uh, intervene over these factors and we also adopt adopt the uh, intervention evaluation framework that we have developed in the previous project, where we not only look at final and intermediate outcomes, but also uh, to, to analyze the effectiveness and cost effectiveness of the intervention, but also at the cost, uh, con uh, at the process, uh, the evaluation of the implementation process, looking at context Con, uh, the context where it, it is implemented, the content, the implementation process, and immediate outcomes. So the, the main, uh, of the general objectives is to evaluate the contextual effectiveness of an integrated care intervention, implementing early cancer diagnosis, uh, taking a participatory approach. It is, this project is also different in the, uh, from the others that we don't focus in, one only, in only one cancer. We are going to look at uh, the most uh, frequent cancers and the, the cervical cancer will be there, but also breast cancer, lung cancer, uh, gastric cancer, colorectal and prostate. The, our uh, specific objectives are first to analyze delays and factors and barriers are facilitators that influence uh, access to early diagnosis of the most frequent cancer and the three involve the Latin American countries, Chile, Colombia, and Ecuador. Then we uh, will adapt and scale up the intervention, which is a multi-component intervention with three pillar, pillars. And then we will evaluate the contextual effectiveness of and the implementation process 
to look for the sustainability and applicability to evaluate we will evaluate the cost of the implement intervention and its implementation as well as the cost effectiveness and finally we will final uh, we will develop a strategy and tools for the sustainable uh, large scale implementation of this multi component intervention for that, we have a double design. On the one hand, we have a quasi-experimental design with a control before and after design, where we adopt a hybrid approach, implementation effectiveness, as I, showed, uh, I have shown in the framework, to look at the implementation process and also the contextual effectiveness, and we con will conduct the economic evaluation based on this data. On the other hand, we will conduct a case study to, using mixed methods approach to analyze the delays and the key barriers and facilitators of early diagnosis, and also to analyze the implication of those determinants for equity in access. Uh, we will adopt a participatory uh, approach and uh, we will analyze the data at, uh, in each country, but also in a, a cross-country analysis. Here, the, the research uh, process and methods, we started by finalize, finalizing the uh, research uh, framework and conducting literature review. And uh, now we we have con we actually started in May, and we have uh, already developed the the initial activities, contacting the health services and uh, setting up the team and so on. And here you see that um, we will have in each country an intervention network and a control network, health services network. So we will first conduct a baseline study and uh, that we will be used, uh, we will use it for uh, develop the country case studies on key barriers and facilitators, but also to be the baseline for the, uh, to analyze the effectiveness of the intervention. We will use quantitative and qualitative uh, methods. Then uh, we will move on to adapt and scale up the intervention. And after 18 months, we will conduct a second, a second study uh, similar to the baseline to analyze the um, impact of the intervention. This will be the intervention will take place, uh, will take place only in the intervention network. And but the study will be both in the intervention and control network so that we can con uh, uh, compare each network with itself and also with the other one. I said this is a participatory uh, 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 project and we have in each country a local steering committee made up of the research team and also representative of uh, the health services. And we have also national and international um, committees to follow up and provide support and advice to the project. And here is our intervention. Sorry, one minute left. Three, uh, three pillars, uh, training in the joint training of primary and secondary care teams, a patient information strategy to uh, uh, navigate the system, uh, a fax track referral. Well, because I have very little time, uh, I only would say that we we have uh, we expect to provide um, uh, evidence on the effectiveness of the intervention, and we will be able to provide tools and methods to improve cross-level clinical collaboration, uh, clinical collaboration, access to healthcare, and uh, and also to improve investigation. And we expect to have e-tools. We have also I, I mentioned it because we we could share it when they are available. Also, the Equity Council LA Access Questionnaire to evaluate the level of access to the services. And we also will contribute to strengthening the research capacity, but also the health services capacity by in motivation, motivating and improving the skills of the workforce. And we think, uh, because we have the previous experience, that we will improve the collaboration between, between academy and health services. An important point that I want to highlight before finishing, is that one of the ways we are going to disseminate uh, knowledge is uh, 
the, the result is by co-producing the knowledge with uh, the main stakeholders in each country. So stakeholders will have the influence and capacity and decision-making capacity to implement the knowledge generated. Again, we could also uh, advertise or make links to the other projects in our web website. We will be happy to, uh, to participate in the meeting and to invite or be invited to other meetings or other workshops of the other projects. Here to uh, show, we, they are, here is where we are, uh, just starting the baseline study with the qualitative study and the quantitative uh, tool uh, and the tools for the quantitative study developing. And the, again, the humans uh, part of it in the QTLA1, we start a small team and we move to a big team. And the same in equity LA2, we finalize by having a, a very big critical mass in our project. And we hope the same for this project. And this is a, another view of our first international workshop in Ecuador in October last year. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thanks very much. Uh, this presentation is open for discussion. Do you have a question? Don't be shy. You're free to ask question. Hi, um, Helene from Andre here. I was wondering the intervention um, I suppose you still are working on that and developing the intervention, but would it also include a kind of demand generating activities? Because from what I understood, the interventions are based on, on health facility level, but would you also try to uh, increase the demand and, and do awareness campaigns uh, in, in, in the communities so that they come for screening or for early detection, the, the women and men? Well, we we are very we don't have this as an objective. We are very aware that in low-income countries, the problem is not that the people, not necessarily the problem that people don't come for a screening, but they don't get the appropriate treatment. So we will focus more on a opportunistic screening, so that by improving the skill of primary care workers we may be able to increase the detection of a uh, cancer and, uh, and be sure that they get also the proper treatment. So it's not only to detect, but also to ensure the treatment. So we could only in increase the demand in so far as there is also a health services answer to, uh, to yeah, respond to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And just something that, that came to my mind when, when listening to the presentation is, of course, if you talk about the barriers um, at the health facility level, that, of course, for now at least, um, yeah, COVID will probably be mentioned a lot and that it interferes with the current uh, services. And anyway, we're all in that position. Well, one, one thing I didn't mention because I was rushing through my presentation is that uh, the evidence existing in Latin America it shows that um, one of uh, the also when when the few studies that would uh, look at delays, uh, the main problem is in the delay within the health services. So once the person arrives in the primary care uh, services, till she she or he gets the treatment. So. Mm, we thought it by, and these are enormous delays. So that we have, they have already the person at the door of the health services, but the, the process of uh, testing, establishing diagnosis and uh, applying treatment is too long. So we thought by to improve the probability of uh, survival, this uh, health services uh, delay should be reduced. And therefore we focus on the health system, on the health services and not necessarily in the population. Also, although we expect also to, if we have uh, the possibility to improve a, a response, we also expect to improve also demand, but no, that there was a way around. So we don't, we didn't like to have a, we wouldn't like to have uh, an increase in demand without uh, being able to respond to it. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's time to uh, move on to the last project, which is Conceles. Uh, I'm, I'm welcoming uh, Dr. Igor Krabovac. Hello, let me just, I hope you see the screen. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, a great big thank you to the organizers of this uh, wonderful networking event. Seeing all of your um, marvelous project fills me with hope for the future of um, cancer prevention research in Europe and beyond. Um, I am here on behalf of the Cancerless Consortium and will briefly outline our project, Cancerless uh, Cancer Prevention and Early Detection Among the Homeless Population in Europe, co-adapting and implementing the Health Navigator model. My name is Igor Grabovac, um, and I come from the Medical University of Vienna. Um, so a brief, a brief background of why we chose this topic. Um, people experiencing homelessness are um, a very hidden population, a very under-researched population. Um, however, the little literature that is available does indicate that they experience challenges in accessing health and support services, uh, one third meet untimely deaths due to preventable diseases and have overall uh, much lower uh, life expectancy compared to uh, people who are, are not homeless. Um, in terms of cancer, cancer is the second most common cause of death in the homeless population. The little um, epidemiological data that there is um, suggests this. Um, and also uh, people experiencing homelessness uh, suffer from much higher cancer mortality compared to the non-homeless. Um, the project is built upon the European um, Beating Cancer Plan, focusing mostly on pillars one and two and partially on pillar three, and also focusing on uh, increasing access and diminishing inequality when it comes to accessing appropriate cancer care uh, services. Um, how are we doing this or what is our plan? Um, we are planning to co-adapt and implement the Health Navigator model which is a combination of two previously already researched and evidence-based models, the patient navigator model and the patient empowerment model, which I'm quite sure you're familiar with. The patient navigator model focusing mostly on community-based uh, service delivery, uh, promotion of access and eliminating barriers to accessing health and social services with the patient empowerment model focusing on um, control over actions, increasing health literacy, um, and also increasing engagement with health and um, social services. The objectives of the project are three main objectives or general objectives. The first one being to deliver the person-centered healthcare services to overcome health inequalities and facilitate timely access to the homeless, uh, to quality care prevention and screening services. The general objective two, uh, focusing on closing the gap in the implementation of the health navigator model for the homeless population as a way of reducing cancer burden and associated costs. And uh, general objective three is to provide a blueprint for a transformation of integrated cancer care services um, in Europe uh, with the adoption of the uh, health navigator model. Um, as much of you, we have a structure of seven work packages with work package one focusing on uh, project management and coordination, work package two creating a theoretical basis for the implementation, Work package three is the piloting itself. Uh, work package four focuses on the evaluation of the pilot. And finally, work package five, uh, which is uh, aimed to create guidelines for health and social care services to uh, improve the continuum of care. Um, work package six, focusing on communication awareness and sustainability. And considering that we are doing that we are working with a vulnerable group, um, we also have a dedicated ethics and data protection uh, work package, which is work package seven. Um, who are we? We are a consortium of 11 partners, uh, a mix of uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, academic and research institutions, as well as local governments from six different countries. Um, the piloting uh, of the project is going to uh, happen in four of the countries, which are the UK, Spain, Greece, and Austria. Um, 
what are we going to do or what are our main outcomes? We are taking a very bottom up, um, co adaptive, collaborative approach um, with the homeless people themselves, as well as uh, different stakeholders, caregivers, and policymakers. We are going to uh, focus mainly on the patient processes, various patient outcomes, and of course, the perspective of the healthcare and social services and do that using a variety of qualitative and quantitative methods. Um, we have started in June, so we are finding ourselves now at the end of month nine. Um, so far, it has been a very, very high tempo. What we have done is uh, already 12 deliverables. Um, and uh, now in January, we saw our first consortium meeting, which unfortunately happened online, but we are hoping to meet also in person in March. Uh, and also very proud of the consortium that we managed to also have our first publication already in, um, in January, which is a scoping systematic review of the patient navigation model uh, for the homeless. Um, what is happening now? We are, with the beginning of February, we are approaching the um, capacity building phase. That means that over the next three months, we are going to hash out the logistical issues of the implementation for the piloting, uh, and create um, a good basis for the intervention. Hopefully also do um, educational, um, educational workshops and um, to prepare our navigators. Um, then we have a 12 month uh, inter intervention phase uh, and then at the end, the evaluation. Um, this is my contact. If you have any further questions, uh, we are more than happy to collaborate uh, with all of you. Um, there is also our website for the Cancerless Project, which I welcome you to visit. And uh, hopefully I'm still on time. And this is everything from, from me at this point. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Is there any question, uh, Igor, about the uh, Cancerless Project? Uh, maybe I missed it. You mentioned that this project uh, is following another project that was already uh, conducted, or you mentioned that you were working on the navigator model based on, on the uh, previously known or publication known on experience, or is this following a, a previous project? No, the um, cancerous project is a, is a new project. It was also funded from the first go. It's not built upon any other projects, um, but the health navigator model as such is built upon um, two previously evidence-based and well-published models, which are the patient navigation model and uh, patient empowerment model. Okay, you, you mentioned that uh, I, so the, 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 the Implementation is going to be conducted in Spain, UK, uh, Greece, and Austria. And Austria. And what drove the selection of the, the, the country? Well, we wanted to have a geographical balance um, and also a variety of um, health systems that are going to be um, that are going to uh, work with the uh, with the um, within the implementation within the piloting. Uh, which we thought was very important uh, when it comes to the creation of a blueprint, because as you know, we cannot create um, policy guidelines that are going to cover the whole of the European Union and all of the participating member countries uh, in the European Union. That that in that way, we wanted to have a different, um, different, different models and different systems uh, participating to to at least cover um, a much of a variety of different uh, healthcare systems. Um, once we start to create the blueprint and recommendations for the implementation or the adaptation of the model uh, following the project, hopefully. Thank you. Any other questions? You have all been so silent today. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. I think that now it's, we have time for general discussion. Uh, together so who want to start 
I may start because I notice that you are all shy. I think that the first uh, general comment I would like to make is that, of course, we, all, we have all been funded uh, by the same call, meaning that the European Union had the feeling that our project was, were not uh, redundant, uh, but were uh, likely to uh, maybe cover different aspects of the need for improved uh, improve, uh, cancer prevention and to and that we can all together uh, make a step forward into the, the, the uh, 2030 goals of eradicating cancer. Uh, I, I think that we are either uh, considering different, uh, different countries, different uh, approaches, so our different uh, population. So the cancer less is for the homeless. Uh, we have been working on, and uh, we are working on the uh, underserved population and some other are. So I think that uh, there is really uh, a need for us to interact, share data as much as we can. Uh, we have all been successful, so that, that we are not any longer in competition. And now we need to uh, to work together. No comments, no question. Um, yeah. Megan, maybe uh, something that was mentioned um, in the beginning as well, like that we noticed that some of our collaborating partners are, um, or that the same countries are working in several uh, projects and it's not necessarily the same team, but I do think it's important that we all reach out. I think in my case, it would be, I saw Ecuador and Uganda and other countries that I tell my partners in Ecuador and, and Uganda that there are people in their country working on other similar projects. So that at least in these countries, they know um, about the other projects going on. I fully agree. And that, that was my question to uh, uh, Evelyn for the Ethiopia East project because they they are going to to pilot their uh, implementation in Romania as we are and and so i think absolutely we need to coordinate just to because i think we are not in competition neither in terms of of uh, intervention nor in terms of uh, aim so that means that if we want our project to be successful uh, we need to tell the, the, the partners that that there are several projects running on their same country Uh, Jack first. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I, I was very impressed by uh, all, all the presentations and, and very good to get to know each other. Uh, I, I see maybe different important topics. There are some projects that are more focusing on, let's say, the technical aspects on how to do the screening, the self-testing, HPV testing, and, and so on. And the others are more directing to, to national strategies and, and, and policies. And as was mentioned before, there are also geographic uh, um, overlaps. So, so maybe we should uh, create some small subgroups um, and try to exchange uh, on, on the different topics and, and try to create uh, um, a, a kind of collaboration between projects that are doing more or less uh, similar type uh, of activities. Uh, and, and I think what was also very much mentioned, there are already some projects that are building on previous projects and have already evidence-based tools and instruments. Um, I hope those are publicly available. I was taking some screenshots, but hopefully we will also share the presentations uh, and, and get further information. So, so let's try to see if we can create some subgroups around specific topics and, and see how we can uh, further exchange um, our tools and instruments. Thank you. Thanks to you, Jeff. That was exactly the purpose of this meeting and thanks to uh, the European Cancer Leagues and Ginevra and uh, Martin uh, and, and David, sorry. Uh, that was exactly 
uh, the objective, uh, as you can see. So, uh, so that, those are the next steps. Thanks, uh, and I, I agree that the objective is to work together. Maria Luisa, you wanted to say something. You raised your hand. Yeah. I just wanted to, it was related to the previous point before I didn't say anything yet. Um, regarding the coordination of the projects who share the same country, say, uh, we are lucky because one of our PIs, the one in Portugal, uh, Sonia Diaz, also participates in the Chile project. So we elevate in Chile. So we are happy we already have one person with two legs, one in one project and the other in the other project, which is very, very good uh, for improving coordination. Although the emphasis of the projects are different, but I'm sure we can, we can then share experiences and, and anything, tools and uh, anything that could be relevant for both projects. Thank you, yes, I agree. I noticed indeed Sonia on one of the pictures, so. Um, She, she'll uh, she'll be aware of the both projects, so, so that yeah. comes in very handy. Mm. Indeed. Sorry, I think that one thing that we can uh, do after this meeting uh, is to draw a map, a real map of what is going to be implemented and where it, where it is going to be implemented uh, to see where we overlap and how we can coordinate. Okay, do you have any, any other questions or comments or remark? Ioannis, you wanted to say something? Yes, right. I hope you can hear me and uh, Mark. Yeah. Can you? Clearly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I want to start saying that it's a privilege to, to join the event today. It's really so nice that you all bring together in the exchange and get to know each other. I knew you separately and it's uh, really, I find it already a very fruitful event. And I want as a key line to support exactly your conclusion, Mark. And if you wonder how commission and uh, how their service is seeing this is the following. Whatever activities you take that they demonstrate added value for the EU, And in the context now of the GSD topic, that it's the Global Alliance for Chronic Diseases, added value for the global partners, that we are very glad to have them in your consortia. It's going to find, of course, uh, our support, uh, specifically speaking about myself, since I'm the responsible officer, you are going to find always my support to, in order to foster it, Uh, the most we can and make uh, out of it the most we can all together. This goes in line with the flagship initiatives. I saw also Igor mentioned it, the Europe's Betting Cancer Plan and the Cancer Mission. They put uh, the prevention and early detection on the one side, on the other side of the cancer pathway, the palliative care, very high priorities. So I'm saying that because so many more opportunities are going to follow up. So, and you can also expand apart from the GSED um, grants, you might feel free to see also what other grants are funded either by Horizon 2020 or the future now calls in Horizon Europe and do apply the same exercise. In GSED specifically, you have been encouraged. It's incorporated in the description of action, uh, speaking admin administratively strictly, but this does not mean that if you come with a new collaboration, as I follow the discussion, either you focus on the country population or the intervention that you are focusing, and you come up and you demonstrate for you, for yourselves, of course, but also back to the EU, what is the added value that brings this collaboration? This is actually great to, to hear. And uh, I'm not sure that it was happening so often and so systematically in the past. I will say at least my experience, my portfolio, your 
your cluster today, your cluster of projects might be a very good example for the cancer field. So I hope I'm well understood and I'm staying tuned for all future activities that you might bring um, by your cooperation. That's what uh, I wanted to add. Thank you very much, Ioannis. Does anyone want to say something? So as, as you can see uh, uh, on the screen, uh, the European Council Leagues uh, uh, would like to organize second meet and Greek uh, meeting on May. 2022, uh, and I think so. We will have to uh, decide whether or not we want to have these those regular meetings. But really, I think we should. Uh, the the pregnancy uh, needs to be determined, but I think that uh, we uh, need to find a, a further interaction. I'm, I'm, I fully agree with the uh the suggestion that is made made to make subgroups and maybe to work together and i think that we as I mentioned we're going to try to make a map of uh, what it, what is uh being conducted in our uh six uh project uh, uh which all have the same final objective So if there is, if no one has uh, anything else to say, I will uh, really uh, first uh, would like to thank all of you uh, for making yourself available and attend this first uh, meet and Greek uh, meeting. Uh, I think we all have really exciting project uh, and we have all been moving forward despite uh, the health crisis we are going through and uh, which I'm sure uh, have had some impact. Uh, for most of us, we have not been able to meet uh, since uh, physically, I mean, since uh, we have been funded because of the travel restriction. And I think it's something that has an impact uh, not only for the pleasure we have to meet and work together, but also for the project, because I've seen that many project needs I need a strong interaction uh, with different uh, stakeholders and uh, we know that uh, it has an impact. So nevertheless, I think that we've been move moving forward quite well, uh, which is already uh, a success. Ginevra, do you want to say something? Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, so just putting my hammer on because I've been corresponding with many of you, especially the coordinators who presented today. So just for you guys to put a, a face to a name and um, uh, I'm the communications officer at the Association of European Cancer Leagues. We are involved in a couple of work packages of Civic Screen and supporting our work package leader, the Women's Institute, um, with communications activities. And um, my supervisor, David Ricci, who's the cancer prevention manager, uh, came up with the idea of bringing all the projects together. And that's uh, that's one of the first uh, meetings that we've uh, done. We've been corresponding with some of you bilaterally. And again, we will discuss with uh, Mark and our projects and the work leader of the communications. The idea is indeed to uh, make this type of meetings uh, periodic, um, hopefully May, if it's not May after, but I think it will be quite fruitful for all the projects to meet at least twice a year to communicate. And I've just popped in the chat uh, the link to a really uh, simple Excel sheet where I've gathered some information from all of you. Uh, so you can see also social media handles, uh, websites, and just to kickstart conversations. And I will be in touch uh, in due course possibly with the communication and dissemination work packages. Um, I think it would be a nice idea to, to have, uh, as uh, Jack Kut, Dr. Jack Kut from Prescriptec mentioned, to have some sort of sub subgroups meetings coming from this. Uh, so why not start from the communication and dissemination work packages? Um, but I will discuss this with the civic screen coordinators, of course. Um, and you can expect uh, the recording of today's meeting and the slides with you. So for the projects who have not sent me the slides, um, it will be great if you could do so. Um, you will receive them either by the end of the week or early next week. Um, and thank you again to be for being here today and many thanks to Mark for facilitating the meeting and the scientific coordinator from Ahadaya, Ioannis Goldis, for, for making it today. Thank you.
Thanks to you. I would like also to thank uh, Christian Bastian Adel and Intem Transfer for supporting uh, the Civic Swing project. Uh, so we will, as as uh, Gina has, has mentioned, we will make uh, we'll say a summary of our discussion and come back to you with suggestion uh, and really uh, uh, schedule the next meeting because I need, I think that absolutely need to uh, meet again and schedule the next meeting as soon as we can. So thanks for all of you of attending the meeting. Uh, that was really insightful. Uh, and see you soon and take care.